Hello, dear friends. Here we are at Kardec Radio, nourishing our souls in one more chapter of Hope and Light. Hope and Light is the book psychographed by Chico Xavier, authored by several spirits. We have already seen messages from our dear Emenio, Maria Dolores, and we'll see Castro Alves. We also see uh, Humberto de Campos. And tonight, we have a very curious poem. This is not the actual name of the poem, but it's a curious poem. It's very short. And it's by Cornelio Pires. Have you heard of him before? I think you did, right? Chico Xavier psychographed messages from several different spirits, from spirits that were uh, Brazilians, non-Brazilians, different languages, and some that were really curious. Who was Cornelio Pires? You will hear his name on and off in several books by, Andrew, by through Chico Xavier. Let me tell you a little bit. Cornelio Pires was born in July on July 13th, 1884, in São Paulo, Tietê, São Paulo, and he discarnated in 1958, in the very year that Chico Xavier was psychographing books such as Thought in Life, Evolution in Two Worlds, etc. He was a journalist, writer, and a Brazilian folklorist. He, Cornelio Pires was the most important studies of the countryman. He understood the countryman and was the first to launch records, the country mus music called today Roots Music. Cornelio Pires was a cousin of the writers Elsie Lessa, Origines Lessa, Ivan Lessa, Sergio Pires Lopes, and his the uncle. He was the uncle of the spiritist journalist and thinker José Herculano Pires. Can you believe it? So he was an intellectual and a man who understood people who lived in the countryside. He used to travel throughout the state of Sao Paulo, not only but mostly. And he would understand the culture behind it. One day in one of his trips, he became acquainted with spiritism and mediumistic meetings. He then bought into that, started studying it, helping it, doing mediumistic meetings. And you know, later on, he is one of the uncles that influences Herculano Pires. Quite amazing, huh? Quite amazing. We didn't know. Here it is, a beautiful story. Another spirit author, through Chico Xavier, inviting us to new understanding. His way of writing was somewhat uh, poetic and um, it had some sense of humor, okay? So, we're going to read this poem, which is short, and I think this is great lesson for parents in it. Why would it be published? Why would it mean you preface a book and say, publish this poem as well, Chico, by Cornelio Pires? Cornelio Pires, he's a writer, he's a serious person, and now on the, in the beyond, he really wanted to educate us as well. So I'm going to read the short poem in Portuguese first. As Leon Denis says, poem is written. It's like written music. And then I'll read the English one. Okay? Are you ready? Hello, Sol Souza. Hello, Carol Correa. Jonas Pelicione. Hello, you're from Brazil. Wow, welcome. So let me open here the book. Hope and Light in Portuguese, Esperança e Vida. And let us go through it. One second, please. All right, and here is the poem. Let's read it. Oops. 
just a minute please I just skipped here it is oh it just escaped me I forgot to mention that one of the spirit authors in this book Jair Presente Jair Presente remember we talked about him but we'll talk more in the near future today the poem is titled Enigma hmm interesting and it says Vais, filha, ao carnaval, mas nada penses de mal, disse o pai com voz serena. É, acrescentou, teu pai te aprova, mas não traga gente nova, que a nossa casa é pequena. Cornélio Pires. Short. Why did Emmanuel ask this? It seems like he's playful, right? Hmm? Good sense of humor. But remember, he is a man who studied the family life, the country, people, right? And in Brazil. And he brings from the beyond this short poem. Why? Why? What's the purpose? We're not going to explain as if we had him here, because he could explain better directly to us. But let us think, because Kardec taught us in all of the Spiritist magazines, in all of his books, he helped us to think. Right, Carol Correa? Very meaningful. Actually, we're, the book is Hope and Light, and we're talking about the hope, the hope of a father believing in this daughter. Because when you don't believe in the person, you don't say anything because it's fruitless, right? But when you still have hope, you invest, you educate. So this is insight number one from Cornelio Pires' lesson. Hope in our children. When parents lose faith and hope in their children, they are failing as parents. And you may say, but Vanessa, what about those terrible children? You want to give up on them because no matter how hard you try. But think about this. As Mentor Joseph says, they are children of God first. Are you telling God, God, this child of yours, you, I don't know. It's not going to amount to anything. This is a big mistake from many parents. Many parents even see babies who are troubled in their first months or, you know, a toddler. Even when people say terrible two, terrible twos, terrible threes, it's terrible when the parents label it this way. Because... They are not seeing that they are losing the hope. In this poem, we see a father who says, I believe in you. You can go to the party, to the Brazilian carnival, which is a party. You can go. But think of no evil. If he's saying think of no evil, he believes that she has good nature. That's wonderful. Right, Jonas? It's beautiful. And he said that in a calm voice, this is interesting, as a neuroscientist, I have been studying for many years the development of the neuroscience of emotional body language. Emotional body language is about the body language related to our emotions. And it's very interesting because Jesus is our model even in regard to that to the nonverbal lessons. This Friday at the Spirit Center of Virginia, we're going to study the nonverbal lessons of Jesus. And what is interesting for us here is to note that the calm, the serene voice of the Father tells much. Because if you're serene, you are not in despair, right? 
If you believe and you're hopeful, you keep tranquility within. So in the poem, we are seeing a father who still believes in the child, which at the end of the day is a child of God. Two, educating. You can go because repressing, prohibiting, restricting doesn't, doesn't do much good. We need to educate. Go, I believe in you. And the serene voice complements the message. So it's what we call congruency. When the voice, the tone of voice, which is emotional body language, plus the content, they match. There is coherence, there is congruency. And then he adds, your father approves of you. That's so beautiful. So if you're a parent friend, do you approve of your child? Do you have hope in your child? Who's the actual parent of this child? God. So if you go to the gospel, according to spiritism, chapter 14, item 9, St. Augustine tells the mission of parents is to link that child to God. So we need to evaluate if we are fulfilling that mission because our mission is not to send our children to school to make them find, get, you know, to universities, degrees, and also um, form a family. No, our goal as parents is to, according to St. Augustine, to connect our children to God consciously, right? So how do we do it? By believing that God is at the top of it all. And you approve, your father approves of you, but don't bring new people since our house is small, of course. We're talking about don't get pregnant. Meaning, secure yourself, protect yourself. Some parents ask me, but Vanessa, am I going to say that stuff to my child? Of course you will. But ideally, you talk before things happen, right? Some people ask, when is the right time to talk about pregnancy? abortion well since ever they're going to the spiritist uh, education they come home the other day mentor joseph said talk to virginia about abortion all the children in the center she's six right now nothing's happening but we need to talk about it because many people get to know of it when it's already too late when the impulses are up and running so we need to Know that this brain develops according to stimulation. If you stimulate, it builds connections. So if we explain, the parents that think that the spirit is not going to understand, they don't understand that behind that little body is an immortal spirit. So Professor Eripides Barsanufo tells us, he tells us clear cut, Talk to the spirit, not to the child. Because I see majority of parents who talk to their children like this. Don't do this. Do that. Da, da, da. They don't explain. We need to explain. Look, we're not going to do this now because we need to sleep tomorrow during school. If you don't sleep early, your body is not going to be rest, you're going to be cranky, you're not going to be able to function well, you're going to regret it. They want to eat chocolate. You say, look, we can eat if that's the right time, right? We can eat, but I'd like you to do the following. Observe how your body feels. Because if your body goes crazy, remember, you're still the commander. Watch out and control yourself because there is what we call sugar rush, right? I'm not gonna say we're gonna give them sugar, but when we do, we need to explain to make them understand and push them towards the command of their body too. The same 
Cornélio Pires is telling here of this father to a daughter. Take care of your body. Don't come back home and join your party. That's why he's saying, think of any evil, meaning evil in the sense of having casual sex just because. Right? Isn't that interesting? Hmm? So, in this short poem, there is so much wisdom. And above all, the hope the parents need to feel for their children. Because at the end of the day, these children are not theirs. They are God's children. So, if you're a parent or an educator or both, it's an opportunity for us to think. Do you believe in the divine of your child or of that student? Because if we don't, we need to calibrate ourselves and say, I approve of you. You're a child of God. I am here to support you, but watch out. Do your share. So this is pretty much the main part of this beautiful poem. Beautiful poem. The second part we would say when he says, don't think of evil, think of no evil. He is telling us about the power of the mind. You are entrusting this child with the power to choose good from evil. And this is beautiful when you say discern. At the end of the day, in that minor line, it's written that this father is boosting discernment in this child scientifically speaking discernment only happens when the prefrontal cortex is mature enough so how do we parents how early should they start since babyhood they are here and we're gonna change the diaper say excuse me my daughter because the body is not ours some parents change the diaper as if they are invading the privacy of whomever. They don't realize we have to be very caring in the sense of like, this body is not mine. Excuse me, dear baby, we're going to change this diaper. And some parents do even worse. They look at the pee or the poop and they're like, oh, oh my gosh. But look. Pee and poop is byproduct of what they ingested, plus the chemistry inside. How can we be disgusted about the natural process? So it's self-control of the parents. Mentor Joseph always said, do not ever despise or be disgusted by the excrement of your child. Because it's their production. You're teaching them that what they're doing is not good enough, psychologically speaking. Psychology explains that to us. So we need to tweak a little bit there and control ourselves and see the beauty of it all. Say, well, the body is working well. It's functioning well. And pay attention, of course. We need to pay attention because there are signs of health or illness in those products, right? So it's also a way for us to control our minds and teach our children discernment saying we're gonna do this now we're gonna go to sleep even if they're babies or toddlers very serenely i believe in you some parents when the babies are born they are so uh hopeless that it's they treat the baby as if they were in a rank and Oh my gosh, I want them to sleep, but they're not going to sleep. Hey, your baby has a guardian angel. This baby is a child of God. Where is your hope that everything can go smoothly? Believe in yourself as a parent and believe in your child as a child of God. So in this short poem, we see Cornelio Pires believing in the best of this child. Right? And Rihanna is saying, we teach my granddaughter that the body belongs to God. We just use it for a while. So we need to look after it to do the work we are here to do. Beautiful, Rihanna. I agree with you. That's a beautiful 
affirmation for the children, this body belongs to God and it's so true. It's a concession, right? So we, we need to cultivate that feeling. And here Cornelio Pires is saying, training this daughter to make choices, saying, choose to think of the good. Don't think of any evil. Beautiful. Cornelio Pires, wherever you are, thank you so much. Because in this short poem, we're extracting lessons. And if we spend here many more hours, we could extract more and more and more. But these are the lessons. First, the hope. We need to have hope in our, in our children. And if you're an educator, in our students. And boosting the discernment training ourselves and our children to think of the good, right? This is Cornelio Pires in this beautiful poem through Chico Xavier from the book Hope and Light. So friends, thank you so much for joining us, right, Silvio Otero? And until tomorrow, God willing, here at Cardiac Radio, with hope and light in our hearts always.